Coming up later on this month, it's the 114th edition of the Drake Relays, April 25th through the 27th at Drake Stadium. And here to preview the Drake Relays, the director of the Relays, Blake Bolden. And yes, the Drake Relay is a fun and exciting event, a special event every year. But this is the Drake Relays in an Olympic year, which makes it all that much more special, correct? Yeah, that's right, Darren. Uh, gr- great to see you, and uh, thanks for your interest in track and field, as always. Um, it, it's it's uh, a special year for Olympic hopefuls, um, and that and that includes those that already have one of those Olympic gold medals somewhere in a drawer in their house. You know, Olympic champions, world champions, um, and and some of those athletes that have been there and just missed their goals, maybe getting those track spikes out for one last track season. And then, of course, the, the stories that we always monitor or try to keep our eyes on, um, those Olympians of the future and maybe sometimes in the near future. So those collegians that are on the cusp of a big breakthrough um, or uh, the, those high school athletes that might be 2028 in L.A. or even 2020 or 2032 in Australia. So um, th- this year takes on a special meaning for the relays and it will be uh, among the very biggest and best in relays history. And when you look at uh, some of those folks that we'll uh, see uh, in the Paris Games uh, coming up uh, here in a few months, uh, tell us about uh, maybe uh, some of those people that you can see in person at Drake Stadium uh, here in a couple weeks. Yeah, uh, every year the Drake Relays provides a record-breaking experience, excitement, entertainment, education for the fans, um, inspiration, all, all of those wonderful things. Last year we saw 11 meet records. This year... One of our very oldest meet record meet records, the men's 800, 145.86. It is in jeopardy. There are a number of area athletes that have uh, committed to run and test themselves on the Blue Oval. Darius Kipiego of Iowa State. Uh, he's an American who's got the Olympic trial standard and an outside shot to, to represent the U.S. Um, internationally. Paris Games would be a big breakthrough for Darius, but it's an opportunity. Um His teammate, Finley McClear from Iowa State, uh, he's got a good shot at the British team. And those two Cyclones were both top eight in the uh, NCAA indoors. And then here from Drake, we have Isaac Baston. Last year, he was the NCAA runner-up in the indoor mile. Um, Will sign a professional contract once the NCAA season is over. Um, Among the best and brightest future stars in middle distances in the NCAA. And a recent Drake grad, Adam Fogg. He was a finalist at the World Championships in England, or excuse me, in Glasgow, Scotland, representing uh, Great Britain. Um, but quickly emerged, having run 349 for the mile as one of the best milers in the world this year indoors. Uh, those four guys, all local ties, all eager to take a shot at that record. The big headline of the day, though, if those guys are underdogs, um, we have Goliath coming to town, the 2021 Olympic champion, the 2022 world champion, Emmanuel Courier representing Kenya. Our meet record, I told you, one of the oldest in the books from 1978 is 145.86. Emmanuel Courier has run 142.0. So this is, that is a top six all-time world's best time. And he's an Olympic champion and a world champion. And this will be his first trip to Des Moines. So Get your popcorn, get in your seats on Saturday, April 27th. That's a minute and 45 seconds you just won't want to miss. And, of course, uh, a lot of the events at Drake Stadium will be uh, that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But when it comes to the Drake Relays, this is really a week-long celebration of uh, running and track and field. Explain some of the other events that will be uh, going on, not only in Drake Stadium itself, but around the Des Moines area. Yeah, let's break it down by day, and we'll do it quick. On Sunday, April 21st, we've got the Drake Road Races, 5K, 10K, and Half Marathon. If you aren't already registered, do it now. Uh, You'll get a chance to start outside Drake Stadium, finish in the stadium. Half Marathon already sold out. The 10K uh, approaching sellout, 5K, maybe just a few spots remaining. Um, so, So it's a great event on Sunday. It will be followed that afternoon by the beautiful Bulldog Contest. Uh, We had more than 100 dogs from 30 states across the country enter the lottery to to be one of the 30 dogs, to the beautiful bulldogs, to contest for that title of most beautiful bulldogs, uh, most beautiful bulldog, excuse me. 
And that's a, that's a perfect family of, event. Come down for the 5K and 10K. Stick around for beautiful Bulldog Contest on Sunday, April 21st. Um, you know, and up from Northeast Iowa and uh, in, in, in your listener area, Darren, maybe a drive to Des Moines to the shopping mall isn't worth it. Maybe you're not coming down just to visit the Apple Store or Shields Sporting Goods. But on Monday, April 22nd, a drive to the mall to Des Moines will be worth it. We're going to have five of the best pole vaulters and uh, men and women competing at a vault at Jordan Creek. Um, <laughs> one of a kind, really unique in the world. First time in 10 years we've hosted that event, free and open to the public. Arrive, uh, the event starts at six, arrive early, stop by you know, the food court, grab some uh, Annie Ann's pretzels or whatever your mall <laughs> favorites are. Come out there because the American record holder, Casey Lightfoot, he and his representative, who himself, Jeff Hartwig, had been an American record holder, have assured me that Casey's going to take a shot at being the first man in the world to go more than 19 feet high in the pole vault wow. inside a shopping mall. So when you're the American record holder and you've gone six meters seven, which is up around 20 feet, you know, he's one of the very, very best in the world. He was fourth in the Olympic Games in Tokyo. When he says that he's going to go five meters 80, that's 19 feet. Uh, to him, that's that's like saying you're going to walk to get the mail, and and he wants to do it in a shopping mall. And maybe maybe that's a little bit hyperbole, but it's going to be an exciting night. Um, <clears throat> Tuesday night, another can't miss event right in the heart of downtown. We've got the Grand Blue Mile presented by Walmart Blue Cross Blue Shield for the eighth consecutive year. It will feature the U.S. One Mile Championships, drawing and attracting the nation's best mile athletes. Last year, in 2023, we were able to successfully ratify the world's first world, world records for the one-mile race on the roads. So, in celebration, and to commemorate that history, we petitioned the city of Des Moines, and we have successfully renamed 13th Street between Locust and Grand World Record Way, wow. because it is where the runners finish the Grand Blue Mile, and uh, for the first time in history then, 3,000 runners, which will mark the second largest one-mile race in the U.S. Um, they'll all get to finish right on World Record Way and then stick around. Uh, free face painting, balloon animals for the kids, uh, inflatables like a bouncy house, DJ, um, and, and then stick around to watch another world record attempt, Vince Ciada, who the world record currently is 356 for the one mile on the roads. Vince has run 350. He's a past Grand Blue Mile champion. He knows the course. He's one of the world's best. Um, he's coming with the intentions of setting that world record. And then Wednesday night, we turn right around and we go right back to Drake Stadium. Uh, we have the Team Shot Put Showcase, and it's going to feature eight of the world's best shot putters. Last year, Jamaican Daniil Thomas Dodd set a Jamaican national record. We will have the best athlete from Jamaica on the men's side, the Swedish uh contender for Paris Olympic finals, the, the, the top Americans converging and it's a free event, 6 PM Wednesday, April 24th. We'll have food trucks, DJ beer sales, just, a, just a blast that night, um, to really come out, whether, whether you like fun events, uh, you don't have to run a mile in this one, but if you <laughs> like big events, just to come sit and uh, enjoy some terrific food and, and a beer and, and watch the world's best, best athletes in an intimate setting. Then we, then we get to Thursday and we really get rolling. I mean, all of that, that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, our champions in the decathlon and heptathlon will be crowned. Uh, the distance carnival is, is become uh, a, a destination uh, for, for not just the, the local track and field fans. You know, we bring the Isis Sorets out. It's a local, local uh, drum corps. They set the rhythm beginning with our high school 3K and 3200. And, and then the, the night becomes electric. In the women's 5,000, we have um, an Indian national record holder in, in, in mid-distance is stepping up to the 5,000 with eyes on Carisha Schweitzer's meet record of 15-17 that was set in 2018. So really, history will be made that night on the track. But what we've been spending most of our time talking about, Darren, is the field events. On the field... For the very first time, we're hosting elite men's and women's hammer and elite men's and women's javelin. And for the first time ever, 
para-Olympic seated throws featuring Des Moines native Justin Fong Savon, who set a world record and is a world champion uh, in his own right in the seated men's javelin. And that evening out on the north throwing fields, we're calling it Thursday night throwdown, and it's going to be what truly one of the best men's hammer, men's javelin um, in North America in all of 2023. And and just a, just an exciting night, chance to see uh, meet record on the track, um, you know, potentially a world record in a seated throw, some of the very best javelin and hammer throwers, which um, I'll pause here before we talk about Friday and Saturday. But when I talk about hammer and javelin, I want you to know what this is. If it, You know, Iowa high school athletes don't get to see these events, mm-hmm. you know, even their parents, family. You may have come to the Drake Relays for 40 years and never have seen these events because they're typically out in those north throwing fields. And that's why we're highlighting them for, uh, just as the distance carnival is getting started in the stadium. So fans can come out and have a new experience. You know, truly, Darren, you've probably been to, to uh, two dozen uh, Drake Relays and, and track meets all over the Midwest. And you will never have seen anything like this. This is the exact intersection of ancient Greek warfare. You know, these implements of war, a javelin, a hammer throw. And then where it meets with the precise and artistic footwork of ballet. And you'll see explosiveness and power and bam, suddenly a 16 foot steel ball is being thrown 240 feet out by 80 meters. Um, pretty incredible for the men. And the same is true when you see a a, 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 spe- uh, a javelin, a, spe- a spear basically being thrown 80 meters. So when you think of that in terms of football, this is a spear being thrown 250 feet, which is more than 85 yards in a football field. So we talk about people throwing a football. Wow, if someone could throw a football the length of a field. This is a, met- a, 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 <laughs> a four-foot-long spear with a metal tip on it that they're throwing almost the length of a football field. Um, and it is the type of a, a, uh, you, you have to see it to believe it. And, of course, uh, from a local angle, uh, obviously the high school events are a big part of the Drake Relays from a local angle. And from what I understand, the uh, schedule uh, for the high school, uh, a little different. You mentioned the uh, 3,000 and 3,200 being part of the distance carnival on Thursday night. Uh, how has the uh, structure of the uh, high school event changed? How has that changed uh, heading into this year? Yeah, we we we. one thing I'll say is, uh, you know, when, when it – ain't broke don't fix it so we 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 typically just make small tweaks so this year with some of the throws that had been on thursday evening we moved them a little bit earlier not because our facility couldn't handle them at that time but so we're encouraging the best throwers in the state and the shot put in the disc to when they throw at the drake relays on thursday it's a little bit earlier this year so they can stick around i want them to come out and i want them to see this javelin and this disc and this hammer see the world's best athlete rudy winkler is the american record holder he's number three in the world right now hopefully they know who he is hopefully they come out and cheer for him because that he deserves that and they deserve that to see the world's best at the drake relays and that's on thursday and then of course that is the perfect question that you ask because friday and saturday is where it all really happens the high school division the college division the university division the, the Paralympic athletes. And then, of course, uh, beginning on Friday, we have and Friday, between Friday and Saturday, 12 events that are on the World Athletics Continental Tour, the professional athletes that are parent, preparing for Paris. Um, but on Friday night, we have the middle schools. On Friday morning, we have the Masters 800. It is really where you see um, that community celebration come to life in a very wonderful way. Friday afternoon will be highlighted by... Uh, the, the best special Olympic athletes in the state of Iowa in a team four by one and an invitational 100. So a terrific community partnership remains with uh, Special Olympics Iowa. And, and that's just, you know, a few minutes out of 12 hours worth of incredible track and field where, you know, we'll, we'll crown. Um, I, I've lost track of it, but I believe it's somewhere uh, between 200 and 260. So it's, it's a fluid number year to year but we'll crown 260 Drake Relays champions and and for every single one of them. And what makes the Drake Relay special, or at least part of what makes the Drake Relay special is every champion that gets a flag gets a chance to do 
some celebration. Maybe it's a half victory lap, recognition in the stadium, and every one of those more than 200 champions flags that are handed out are celebrated wonderfully by a sellout crowd. Mm -hmm. There's not many times in your life, Darren, as a member of the media, you may get many praise, you may get award, people really follow what you do. Very rarely do you get a standing ovation and get handed a flag. And that's going to happen in Drake Stadium next uh, in ten uh, in two weeks from now. And that's the cool th part about this event. Uh, you can have the small town Iowa kid from a 1A Iowa school walking shoulder to shoulder with the potential gold medalist in Paris this year. Where else in the world can you find that? Not very many places. No, that's right. And I was on the phone uh, a couple weeks ago with one of the world's most prominent at agents in track and field. And she was just talking about the pros, but it certainly it can be meant um, at every level. Um, you know, she said, Blake, your meet's the best in the world because it's a one-stop shop. And that means if you're a world-class miler, a world-class hammer thrower, a world-class hurdler, a sprinter, distance runner, jumper, there is an opportunity for you at the Drake Relays. Um, and, and then what I would extrapolate that even further is where, you know, you, you talk about high school to Paris and that side by side, where else do you get to see and cheer for the hot guys and be competing right alongside them and the Cyclones and, and Luther College and uh, Loris that wins a national title indoors. They get to be all right in that same sphere competing as they prepare for their own championships um, it, you know, Gonzaga Bulldogs are coming, the Kentucky Wildcats, Illinois Illini, Utah Utes, you, you see all these teams and it's, it's a pageantry of colors, but it's like March Madness all, all here at once at every level of the sport. April awesomeness. How about that? There you go. There you go. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get that trademarked as soon as possible. All right. Uh, just remember where you heard it first there. Uh, Blake. But, uh, <laughs> anything we're missing, anything else folks need to know about the uh, Drake Relays coming up here in a couple of weeks? No, a lot of great information. We went through it all very fast. Keep up with the latest news at drakerelays.org. And single session tickets are available now. They're going fast. We're headed toward our 57th consecutive Saturday sellout. And that, that information can be found at draketix, draketix.com slash relays. All right, Blake, always good to catch up with you. Uh, great time of year. I know uh, you're excited for a couple of weeks from now, but uh, that'll be the first of a lot of fun uh, state uh, track meet uh, three weeks after that. Uh, there's a re reason uh, Des Moines is track down USA. Uh, best of luck with everything as you get ready for America's Athletic Classic. Great. Thanks a lot, Darren. Great to see you. We'll see you down here at the Blue Oval. Blake Bolden uh, with the uh, Drake Relays, April 25th through the 27th in Des Moines.